have a, I have a PowerPoint I just put together if anybody's interested. Yeah, I want to see it. Yeah. Stand by. I think it'll be different for most of you. <laughs> Good. Can you see it now? Yes. Yes. Yeah, three days. <clears throat> All right, so they're talking about three points in a row, and which one's going to be higher? Well, I just I just put this together the other day, for the which I thought was pretty germane to what you're all saying just now. And you may have seen this before. This is the main surveyor up in Maine. Jesse Klausowski went to Taganak, New York. I went to Hagerstown, Maryland. And these three points are a section of Great Circle. And we had I had messed around with angles to the sun and of course people like Lemon and Chris Berry or whatever, they, they say angles don't mean anything. So let's let's ignore the angles. So let's just measure the distances. Now, measuring distances needs a little oh proof that you can measure a distance, I guess. <clears throat> so this is a classic typical total station. My very cherished um, massive array of retro mirrors, much like it's on the moon. And I measure the vacuum measure distance, just a pure laser ranger distance. We all like lasers, don't we? And here's an older model, does the same thing, just measures distances. Nice, very old retro mirror. And then I have this. I have two GPS antennae and two GPS receivers. Now, when I talk GPS measurement, I am not talking about what you get on your phone, what you get with your handheld Garmin. I'm talking about recording the full radio signal from 10, 12 satellites all at the same time at two different locations. So when you measure, <clears throat> when you record the signal, independently at one receiver and independently at a second receiver, the two receivers are not interacting. They're just recording data and those two data files are brought together in software. And the total station just uses a laser ranger, 872.358, just about a half a mile. Easy peasy, everybody does it ubiquitous. If I take the two data files from the two GPS receivers and just extract the distance between the antennae, I get to the millimeter the same answer. So if somebody says, where's your evidence? GPS, you can extract just a pure, simple distance between antennae. Now, this is a total station. Total stations sometimes have built-in electronics and corrections. All right, but if you can, if you know anything about them, you look at that little triangle icon, you see this is just the unadulterated slope distance, mark to mark, much like this, which also happens to be identical. Now here's my older instrument, which has no such curvature capacity built in. You'll, you can see on here that a beautiful 1977 manufacturer's label, and it gets the same millimeter. All right. Now, when dealing with A to B measurement by GPS, line of sight doesn't mean anything. The receivers record data independently without any interaction between the receivers. They're strictly, purely independent. So I measure a distance from A to B and I measure a distance from, from A to C, C to B, and B to A. Oops. <clears throat> now, if you look at this, these three distances, this, this is Hagerstown, Titanic, New York, and Lakefield. Those three points are in a straight line. But you notice the distances overlap. 
the distance from Alpha to Charlie, Charlie to Bravo, added together are longer than the simple distance of A to B. By 450 meters. 450 out of 838,000 doesn't sound like a lot. Actually, it is. And when you take those three lengths, you end up building a triangle. And so we get Hagerstown, Tag Panic, and Lakeville. Notice the triangle. Now the triangle have three points. Three points can also define the curve. And that's when we end up with this. Now, if you build that triangle out of those three distances, you notice 3,000, you, you end up with three isosceles triangles. The triangle on the left, which is A, C, in the center of the earth. And the triangle on the right, which is C, B, in the center of the earth. And then the big isosceles triangle of A, B, in the center of the earth. And notice here, by the simple, and this is high school trick, no angles, hardly, just distances. You notice the distance, uh oh. What happened? The distance to the center of the Earth, 39, 58 miles. 39, 57 and a quarter miles. 39, 56 and three quarter miles. These three points in Hagerstown, Tag Hannock, and Whitefield are all low elevation. This is not on a mountaintop. Tag Panic and Whitefield are only about 100 feet above sea level, and Hagerstown is about 700 feet above sea level. But the reason why those three distances are different is because we're on a spheroid. And so the radius that you get from that if you look at doing the full math and you involve zenith angles to the sun, you notice I get on the left 3962.944, which is an effective radius of the ellipsoid for that 260 mile length. And if you calculate it, you get 3963.08. In other words, not even, not even a tenth of a mile different or just over a tenth of a mile different. I mean, it's almost exact. And if you look at the right-hand side, you see a little more error, but still only in the neighborhood of a half a mile off of 3964 mile radius. But the point that I, that I wanted to bring up with this, uh -oh, is that this triangle and of course we have the the cord across here. That's eight and a half miles. And if you quit like a bunny, can figure out eight inches per mile squared, and the distance from the middle to an end is two hundred and sixty point six one two miles. You will see that that is also eight and a half miles at eight and a half inches per mile squared because eight and a half inches per mile squared is accurate for like 200, 300 miles. It's not a lot different. But I wanted to show how just three simple distances measured to a part in a million, half a part in a million accuracy build this very shallow triangle. This triangle is not scaled because it would be, it's really, really, really skinny. But that's the demonstration of how severe, if I can get back to the beginning, how severe the curve is across these three points. These three points are in a line, but in a line is in plan view because these are three-dimensional points in space. So these points, I describe them as coplanar because three points define a plane, three points define a triangle, and three points define a circle. So if I just use distances, I cannot get flat. And I'm just using distances. You can see hardly a single coordinate on here, just distances. 
and I, I can look, I can get a distance if there's a mountain in the way, I can get a distance if there's a you know, big section of the earth in the way. And these three distances clearly overlap because 450 meters, even over 838 kilometers, is grotesque error in my in my world. Even if that's only a few thousand, you know, a couple of hundred, teeny hundreds of a percent, 400 meter error in two in 520 miles would also, if that were error, then in my 872 meters, that would still be a half a meter of error. So this is coincidentally 872 meters and the distance from Maine to Hagerstown is 838 kilometers. It, it have, so it's almost a thousand to one ratio. So if I had a 400 meter error in the long distance, I'd still have a half a meter error here. Now, Joan, I'd like to say, I showed you mine, you show me yours, and flat earth, of course, do not measure anything. And people like Travis said, oh, that takes money, that takes equipment, that takes time, that takes people. Well, yeah, you're looking right there what used to be $30,000 of equipment. Yeah, all I can say is, Roman, is uh, welcome to reality, flat earthers. Everything costs money. You know? So, so, and, and even that, these these reflectors, that costs about $1,000 a piece. So that's a $3,000 mirror that could easily cost six or eight thousand dollars when it was new and like I said the um, the GPS receivers it used to be a bargain price if you get three of those for a hundred grand in 1995 now these things are available these things are a little bit obsolete from an operational standpoint but a newer piece of GPS equipment will not measure better it can't because we're dealing with digital signal. It still gets the same fraction of a part per million. And that's over one mile or over a hundred miles or over 500 miles. It doesn't have a scalar issue because we're dealing with the disk, we're dealing with signals coming from the satellites, which are hundreds and hundreds, you know, thousands of miles away. And a separation of a few hundred miles is insignificant in that whole, in the grand scheme of things. So when I talk about measuring a distance with GPS, I'm going from antenna to antenna. When I'm comparing that to e, uh, an EDM measurement or a total station measurement, I'm going from instrument to reflector. Straight line, simple core distance. And if you take those three distances from main to New York, to Hagerstown, and then close that out, you end up with a triangle. You cannot end up with a straight line without invoking hundreds and hundreds of parts per million error. So, since I didn't measure an angle, we don't have to deal with lemons, oh, the satellites aren't any good at distance, we don't have to deal with with Gleam and, and and Gary about, oh, the angular distance. There's no perspective here, no angular distance here, no eyeballs, no angles, just a simple distance, which I did demonstrate over a relatively short distance, equals laser ranging. And that builds a triangle. That triangle has a segita of eight and a half miles. That eight and a half miles is very, very, very close to eight and a half inches per square of the miles. So I just thought I'd bring that to the fore. I did get a, I, I have seen a couple of times where I'm getting some reference, like on, on Nathan Oakley and a couple others that, oh, oh those guys, Kozlowski and Scott, the guy in Maine, all they want to do is show you measurements, diagrams. Travis, don't show me diagrams. Well, I don't know what else to do. I, just, I have numeric data, here's my sketch of that numeric data, and of course I did measure angles because that's what I do, because the angle on the right 
is slightly smaller than the angle on the left. Once again, not spherical, ellipsoidal. And yeah, the ellipsoid is observable with ubiquitous land survey equipment, not university white paper abstracts. Any instrument? Larry, that's a beautiful presentation. I really congratulate you for that. But if and there is and another, I'll, I'll let me ask you. Let me ask you a question real quick. Well, let me finish. Let, give me one more. Well, two more sentences. Jeff, and then you're up first. Yeah. Two more sentences. We. I had done this a couple weeks back, and I only had two points. Well, of course, that lit a fire under Jesse. He said, "Let's get three, and he hopped in his vehicle, and he drove for three or you know three plus hours navigated in to getting halfway between we set a point and we made some measurements and then we realized okay he's very close to the middle he's very close to the middle but he needs to go about another 60 meters and he we went back on a subsequent day and again yielding to the argument that when Eratosthenes did it Eratosthenes only had Two, two data points, the well and his shadow of the obelisk, and it's a yeah, but three points, yeah, that now that be serious. So we put three points in a row. We got within to the exact thousandth of a mile in between, and we got two unique angles, and the zeniths represent plumb bobs, and the plumb bobs are not hanging parallel, and they converge at the center of the earth. And in Eratosthenes, he had seven and a half degrees. Notice in this measurement here, we end up with seven and a half degrees <laughs> because we measured across 520 miles across the surface. And you notice it's just slightly shorter as a cord. And GPS, you may extract the unadulterated distance between antennae and that is a cord and I got two short cords and I got a long cord and they, the only way to put those together you end up with a triangle that's got an eight and a half mile Sagita. I'll now take questions. No, 